Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, including the stuff from Silver Tempest, make sure you check out the Town store. You can get a 5% discount on your orders using that code OmniPoke. For today's video, we are going to be analysing some online tournament results. We have three online tournaments since the Arlington Regional Championships. This is still pretty important to take in if you are going to the San Diego Regional Championships or if you're going to the Liverpool Regional Championships, myself included, um, just a few weeks after that. So we are kind of closing the chapter on Silver Tempest, but there is still plenty of reason to be looking at these results before we start introducing some Crown Zenith stuff to the channel very soon. So we, uh, we're we going to be looking over three tournaments today and then giving a little synopsis towards the end of where I think <clears throat> Decklist should be uh, sort of catering to what sort of archetypes and whatnot. So we'll start off by looking at an Arc Duraludon, which was able to win this first tournament, the Muji's Dojo number eight. And it looks like a pretty interesting list, to be honest with you. We have the Sinnoh and Cave split. Uh, recently on the channel, I had Collapsed uh, instead. Um, but Sinnoh also gives you that sort of secondary line of defense against the Yveltal, where you can try and Parasol up and have a Temple of Sinnoh to force not only a Stadium Bounce, but also that Tool Bounce in one go and really put pressure on the opponent. I'm not a huge fan of uh, Dragon-type Duraludon when you're not playing uh, Tower of Darkness. Doesn't seem to make much sense to me, really, here. And the Drapion is also a little bit interesting. Like, I know Mew is popular, and I guess this is also trying to respect um, Mewtwo to an extent, so... It's one of these where it's, like, such a horrible card to lead in the deck, but I can see why people are going for it. It's not something that I necessarily back, but the logic is there at the very least. The one thing I'm not a huge fan of as well is the two copies of Boss. I feel like to actually have a good time into Lugia, you need Boss pretty much on the spot. So you want to be targeting Archeops, you want to be targeting Yveltal if it ever comes into play um, <clears throat> to really give yourself the best defense. Even when you are playing Temples, I think that makes the most sense. Um, so I would like to see at least a third copy of Boss come in here. It also seems like quite a slow list by all accounts by not having any trekking shoes only the two poker gears. It feels like there's a lot of just like consistency space you're giving up with that list from what I can tell. It was able to beat a Lugia Archeops in the final. And uh, it was actually a Lugia Archeops that was playing double vacuum as well, but no stadium. So would have had to have found pumpkin plus vacuum on a specific turn that you commit to, to your Yveltal. So you can see why it can be a little bit uh, awkward at times. Uh, it is adding in a Blissey V as well as a Stoutland. We haven't seen Blissey V really incorporated in Lugia much at all. Uh, so I'm not really seeing why we need a Blissey right now in the game. Uh, I think we found better ways to protect ourselves from controlling Yveltal strategies. Uh, especially when this list isn't even playing like a Bird Keeper or anything. So some interesting text going on. I do like the uh, item lineup quite a lot. I like the supporter lineup quite a lot. The energy count is still fine. There's a lot uh, that's like just spot on here in terms of what you'd expect. Blissey is kind of the standout card that isn't always going to be in the lists, uh, especially after Connor doing well with Raikou. I potentially expect more Raikou to be in 60s, to be honest, going forward. We have a Regis uh, that got top four. And this looks like a pretty straightforward Reggie lineup. Pretty straightforward supporter lineup as well. All looking straightforward. I think it's just like a bog standard Reggie list with the quad path, which I'm definitely a fan of right now in the meta. So I do like that list quite a lot. And Collapsed has, for the most part, gone out of the majority of Lugia's. I know Collapsed was in Connor's winning list, um, but it's like a one count maximum these days, which is something you can uh, get away with. Looks like this list is playing that one Collapsed, like I just mentioned. Again, the energy count looks pretty straightforward. Looks like Dunsparce Manaphy have come back into the list. It's a bit of a strange one where Dunsparce Manaphy respects Reggie quite a lot. It makes, like, the timing of a Manaphy is good against Kyogre Lost Box, but you, it's quite bad against these, like, Rayquaza Raikou Lost Boxes, and it's really bad against, like, just Manaphy Sprinkle stuff anyway, so the timing of these cards is really weird. 
Um, so I don't know where I stand on Manaphy Dunsparce, to be honest with you. This list does have a Sharon's Care, which is kind of interesting as well. So a few different spicy cards. The Burnett is something that I'll still never really get behind. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, still the core of the Yuval Zard and the Stoutland being pretty much guarantees in the list these days. The Double Fish uh, can be a really nice option as well. So a lot to like about that 60. We have a Giratina as well. Haven't seen this for a while. Nothing too surprising about the list. Temples are pretty much the only defense you can have. Tool Jammer could be nice uh, in Mirror as well as, or like in Lost Box Mirrors as well as helping you against, uh, you know, like Charizard or Alugia bursting through you. Especially when Alugia wants to commit at least a couple strongs to a Stoutland to try and mess you up. Um, but I do think Giratina is still not the not the safest play. It's going to continue to have a weak Lugia matchup, I would say. Overall, we see an Arc Intel doing pretty well with the Lost Cities in here, which is pretty interesting. A great way to try and give yourself defense against Reggie players and Lost Box players, and just be a general nuisance. Has the Sharon's Guardi. Big Charm V-Guard package to really just tank out against uh, the likes of Lugia, the likes of Mew, which is pretty cool to see. And a nice lineup of supporters as well, which seems to all make sense. So, yeah, I, I do feel like there's still something to be said about Arc Intel. It's not a dead archetype. It draws better than a lot of archetypes in the game, honestly, right now. <laughs> and it has a lot going for it. We do see a Mew with Sparkle, Meloetta... Nothing too surprising here. The big parasol to protect you maybe a little bit against Yveltal. Both of them, actually. <laughs> Allowing you to keep energy on board as well as uh, stopping an amazing destruction, which is kind of cool. Outside of that, more or less straightforward. I do like Silene even in the Sparkle build quite a lot. I like Ropes as well. It buys you a space, and I really feel like the Catcher build is making your own list pretty inconsistent, so that's a list that I really like. And then we actually have a Flaffy... Uh, oh my goodness, it's a Pika V Union. So for those who don't know, there is a item locking attack from the Pikachu V Union. It also has a 250 damaging attack right here. And uh, what's the other thing other than Union Gain? Uh, you can try and paralyze as well, of course, of course. Uh, so there's a lot going on with the Pikachu stuff. So quite different from the list that we actually saw from the Australian Regional Championships. Um, still has that sort of paralysis angle. It has a route in here. It has Torment from Morpeko. Looks like it's just like a lightning tech toolbox in a way. Their means of discarding the Pikachus are essentially just the ball search cards and trekking shoes. Is there anything else you can really do here? I guess Raihan can cherry pick a piece here or there. So yeah, it's like a heavy, and obviously researchers. It's kind of like a cycle heavy build to actually get this off. I don't, I mean, it's flashy, right? It's certainly flashy. I'm surprised there's not just like a Vika Vault to try and buy you more time to dig through the deck. That would just make sense to me, right? Because item lock is only good against Lost Box when it's done super early. I think like it's so much weaker in the mid to late because they could have already got value from a ton of their switch cards, filled up their loss zone to be smacking, uh, and maybe even Mirage Gates at least once before you're able to land a disconnect. So it feels a little bit weird. Let's be honest. <laughs> this feels like a fun, a fun choice, and that six three record. Uh, but yeah, let's go on to um, the girls' night out, which was a sort of last minute replacement to. The Late Nights, uh, from how I understand it. The tournament was won by Genesect, Mew. And this looks to be a path judge base build, a disruption approach, which continues to be a powerful option. Seeing Heroes Medal sneak in here as well can be nice against Drapion, of course. Try and make them go through that extra Mew, or just take an extra turn to knock stuff out. Has the Silene in here as well, which I'm definitely an advocate of. So yeah, it looks to be a pretty straightforward, good Mew. Looks like an Arceus made it into second place. This is kind of like that Catron list, which is trying to incorporate Aerodactyl V-Star, which has made it to a finals of a regional now. So maybe we need to put some respect on Ancient Star at being one of this key disruption options against a Lugia player. Whenever you go first, whenever you have one of your 
eight ball search outs into your Aerodactyl, so nine total outs to get them down. Actually, you have captures as well, so even more outs to get the early Aerodactyl established. And then you need to find um, a way into your Ancient Star, either by like paying retreat if you're already attached onto an Aerodactyl turn one, uh, or finding one of your air balloons or switches out of the deck to get that Ancient Star off. And as soon as you shut down Summoning Star, you should be breezing through that game. You also have the Espeon to try and slow down uh, Lost Box players and really limit their options in terms of what they can use. There's even an Empoleon in here with Fan of Waves. There's so much going on. Um, the Fan of Waves is a package with the Shadow Rider to just try and shut down Mew players. Um, so it's like, it's a handful of packages shoved in to try and beat different decks with an Arceus in the middle just to try and stitch it all together really is the key concept here. Um, you also have a Collapse, so you can try and collapse Shadow Rider, which is kind of cool. Whilst fanning away as well. Oh man, I mean, there's a lot going on here, but... Cool deck, and it's it's a counterbox deck. Then we see a... Okay, so this is similar to the finalist list with the Vika Vault, the Aerodactyl coming in. This might be actually just card for card the same. If not, it's definitely close from my memory. Uh, yeah, it's looking pretty much the same, as far as I can tell. So just trying to take it out for a spin and see how it does and it seems to have done pretty well uh, in this occasion i do think this archetype definitely has legs where you have the item lock angle for a couple of big matchups and you have the aerodactyl ang angle for exactly lugia plus you have that core of being lightning against lugia as well which is definitely helpful so yeah it seems to be a strong deck i think even though it looks strange on paper it's one that could easily stick around just because it's good at beating the two top decks uh, and has answers for mew as well we see an Eternatus doing pretty well with the high temple counts, the high wheezing line coming in here, one parasol as well. It's an interesting archetype, the Eternatus. I mean, it's had some day two placements now, and this looks very similar to Frank's 60 with the Judge and the Marnies coming in and just spin that wheel and try and buy turns from opponents here and there. Uh, seems to be getting the job done a good amount of the time. We have... Um, pretty interesting Lugia with Lost City in the list. I wonder what Lost City is for in Lugia. Nothing immediately comes to mind that makes me think you really need a Lost City. Um, has a pretty reasonable supporter lineup. Has Eldegoss Birdkeeper, which I'm a fan of personally. Has a lot of the colour energies to try and use Raikou and still have the potential to use Eltal or Zard in the same game, which is interesting. Uh, so yeah, not a bad list at all. Uh, I would kind of like that fourth capture energy when you're this low on the Lugia account, but other than that, seems very reasonable. And then we have Gustavo. Let's see what type of Lost Box he's bringing to the table. Uh, it looks to be the Kyoga combo list that has a splash of lightning in here as well. Even though it's Zekrom, it's still incorporating Choice Belt, so it's interesting to have both of those. I guess the Choice Belt also helps the Snorlax, so I guess that's kind of the differential. Um, I'm a little surprised to not see the Zekrom alongside... Well, sorry, instead of Zekrom, it, should, it, like, it could be Zera Aura, I guess in theory. But Paralysis can have upsides into other matchups as well. And when it's open decklist, you know when you need to Wild Shock for Paralysis, and you know when you want to find Belt on top of it, so... Maybe for open deck list, this is just an easier thing to try. And you can sub this out for the free retreating Zero Aura instead when need be. Uh, then we have a Reggie as well. So been doing pretty well in online tournaments. This one's playing that additional Gigas. Just three stadiums makes me a little bit nervous. But this one is having the respect to play Echoing Horn. And has Rope as well. Try and maybe push a Pikachu away and then bring it back up with Serena when need be or whatnot. So that's kind of interesting. Pretty reasonable list overall. I am. It always worries me when I just see three rod, though. It seems to be a cut people are trying to make these days, but I think you do get punished for it quite a bit, to be honest with you. And then we have Calcona also with uh, Kreckler's recent list that got second place and uh, got themselves a top eight. Not bad at all. Let's go on to the final one of the day, which is the Tournament of Doom, which is trying to replace Santa Claus, because uh, this was on Christmas Eve, I believe. And it looks like it was a 
Waterbox, which was able to win the whole thing. This is the Articuno Jelly package. Has a crab in here for higher damage output. Same with the Starmie. Has the Ice Cube for some water boxes with the one wash water energy. I think if you are going to try the Ice Cube thing, you probably need more than one wash. But uh, we've seen this uh, before, uh, so not too much to really be said on this matter. Um, it's interesting that... <clears throat> Connor's winning list only paid one bird keeper and like no goss, so maybe paralysis is low key back on the table for some people. As we move on to the next list, which is actually incorporating Jammer into Lugia, which I'm personally a bit of a fan of. I do like it as an option because uh, it can give you more defense in Mirror and Tool Jammer is also really annoying for Lost Box. So low key, I'm expecting Jammer in Lugia's going forward as like a one. Maybe as high as two copies. There's some interesting cards going on in this list, though. It's playing Peony <laughs> uh, and Echoing Horn. Echoing Horn, I think, makes more sense when you do play the Gift Energy. Maybe that's a big reason why there's a Gift in the list. So you can try and make that gust, like Horn-Gust combo happen towards that mid-to-late game. And obviously it is a big win condition card in Mirror sometimes, where you're going to... <clears throat> bring back a two prize even if the opponent's been cautious and tried to limit to one prizes for a large portion of the game or using you know luminions which often happens in the matchup so a lot to like that you can even horn back one prizes for stoutland to double dip into so a lot of versatility behind the card um outside of that looks like a very uh solid 60 like i said when you're playing this thin lugia i definitely like the quad capture being on the list so yeah, overall pretty happy. The peony is kind of the big question mark, I guess. But when you play double fish, maybe it's just the best option you can have. You can make some cool plays with like incense quick ball just to thin that extra <clears throat> Archeops and give yourself a one prize attacker or give yourself a Luminion for the following turn, that sort of thing. Uh, so it can get you out of some binds here and there. Definitely a cool list to see. Then we have uh, a Lost Box. This looks to be a Raikwaza list, as I'm trying to call it, to give it some differentiation between the Kyogre and the Charizard builds. The Raikwaza uh, being another option where you have a really messy energy attack cost, but you have some of the big power spike attackers. The beat stick potential of a, Rai, uh, of a Rayquaza. Raikou for mirror matches, for Regis. Uh, can be helpful into the Lugia matchup, of course. There's even a Zekrom sneaking into this list. I'm not too high on the Zekrom, but again, I guess it's open list dependent to see how strong it will be. There will be times where it's like completely busted. Um, anything else really on the list? Uh, no, it looks pretty uh, straightforward from that point. I don't think there's anything crucial like missing from the 60 or anything like that. Um, seems pretty reasonable overall, to be honest with you. Then we have another Eternatus. So these are starting to sneak around doing bits. I think at its core, Weezing is just a big, slow option to try and buy yourself time into all sorts of matchups. With the Forest Seal Stones, with the one boost shake, you give yourself a decent number of outs to get it, even if you are going first. Um, and the deck does want to go first, I think, I'm pretty sure, because you want to bank attachments onto other things, not just rely all in on, like, a wheezing to get you there throughout the entire game. Otherwise, you may as well just play quad wheezing. Um, and yeah, continue to play that high temple count to try and do things. Um, I'm low-key kind of interested in Lugia's playing the, the colognes that we saw um, from Liam's list from Arlington, if there are going to be more wheezings popping up. <clears throat> then we have another Rayquaza, this time playing a Roxanne in here. I'm not too big on Roxanne, honestly. I think this deck isn't really about the disruption. I think it's more combo-based, and it will wrap out race things if it gets what it wants. So just make sure it gets what it wants as much as possible is normally my logic. Because <laughs> you have such small stuff, like, there's not really any combos you're denying from people by Roxanne-ing them, to be honest. Like, maybe Mirror is the only exception to that but also just winning that race would make more sense in Mirror. We see a Zoroark doing pretty reasonably. I have no idea why this is playing Curlia instead of um, Cincino, seeing as though it's not playing a Gallade or a Guardi at the top end. <laughs> but 
because you're just losing out on good stuff and you're 10 hit points less and you have a higher retreat cost. It's like all worse and you lose out on an attacking option even. So this should definitely just be Cincino if you're not playing the stage twos on the top end here. <clears throat> uh, outside of that, I mean, I'm still petrified of playing a deck like this, to be honest with you, because I think it's just so weak into Lost Box, which is a deck that I definitely respect massively. We've got a Roseanne's backup path to the peak combo to give you potentially a lot of options to attack into Duraladon. But do you really need it when you already have Jirachi, you already have Slowbro, and you already have Mightyena, which can two-shot through them? <coughs> I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure you need paths. You are honestly probably better with Glimwoods, or like one Glimwood, one Pokestop that we've seen previously. Um, but yeah, the Curly is definitely a downgrade <laughs> in that list when you're not playing the top end. Then we have a Blissey that has done reasonably well. Uh, when I clicked on this, I was expecting to see a very high Veltal count and just incorporate that mentality into a number of matchups, but this looks to be like an old-fashioned Bliss tank. I think a lot of people have moved away from Espeon VMAX in Lugia. So I think there is an option for a Blissey to do pretty well with that quad cry of destruction option, where you just try and screech your way through the Lugia matchup, and then you use Blissey and your Hyper Potions and Capes against Lost Boxes. Maybe it's a bit behind the times, though, because Lost Box is now very much able to burst a lot more with um, Rayquazas. But I imagine it would be pretty good against the um, the Kyogre and Charizard base builds. So maybe there is something with Blissey to sort of make a way back into the format, because <clears throat> it really doesn't care about a lot of these new decks on the fringes. Like, I doubt you care too much about Eternatus, because uh, you don't care about wheezing too much. I don't think you care too much about the item locking decks because you're just chunky and bursting through and you play like a normal support account. Uh, and I think you can have game plans into Lost Box and Lugia. So I low-key think Blissey is very underplayed. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if it started to make a comeback towards the latter end of this format. I think it would be decks like this that would be the only thing keeping it at bay. Uh, some Rayquaza-based builds. This one's interestingly dropping the um, Rayquaza part of the deck, going back to water energy, sorry, the Raikou part of the deck, going back to water energy. I don't know. I feel like you can be more efficient with your energy count if you just play two metals here and then you get to play the extra lightning or grass <clears throat> or you just get to play an extra training court. All of that's just like good news for you. It's also very light on the Switch card. I guess it's pretty normal on the Switch cards. But it plays no Gust as well, which is a little bit weird. Uh, by not playing Raikou, you have no way around Ice Q either. So definitely taking some risks with this 60, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, I guess Ice Q is, again, kind of gone back into the shadows for a little bit. But definitely something to bear in mind if you're not respecting it. You are opening yourself up for L's here and there. Uh, then let's just talk in general about where we are in the format. So in the Silver Tempest meta, I don't know if you can see this, but Lugia Archeops has taken up 45% of the points among all decks earned in IRL tournaments, which is pretty absurd. Honestly, I think Lugia Archeops is like just fine. I think the question mark becomes whether we are going to do this Manaphy Dunsparce dance or not. Um... <clears throat> because there has been Raikou surfacing uh, recently, not just in Lost Box, but also in Mirror now. Um, the only sort of question mark would be that they are liabilities to put into play in the Mirror and against Lost Box, because a Sableye can capitalize on it, or a Lugia can capitalize on a lower hit point Pokemon by using Stoutland, right? So there are risks to even putting down the sort of tech cards that you're trying to do to protect against Raikou and whatnot. So, honestly, I'm thinking more that I want to keep them not in the list <laughs> myself, similar to how Connor bought those spaces. But again, it does come with those risks. Lost Box, I, I keep seeing more of the Raikou Ray doing well, and I do see that being very strong. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing to really say that the Charizard... Snorlax build isn't great either. It's probably just a little bit weaker in Mirror. Um, 
Mew is just fine. We've seen disruption builds. We've seen turbo builds all doing well. Uh, I would expect Lugia to be a lot less heavily teched going into San Diego than it was for Arlington, where basically everyone and their mother was playing a Drapion, even in things like Lugia, just to deal with uh, Mewtwo control. <laughs> so um, I would imagine there's probably going to be less hate for San Diego. Um, but that's not to say that there won't be still some Lugias and some Lost Boxes still playing uh, the Drapion tech. Uh, and some of these like anti-meta box decks like Vikavolt and whatnot are probably still going to play Drapion. So they're not going to be completely gone, but Arlington, everyone pretty much had their guns out ready to deal with Mew. Mostly because people also want to deal with Mew too. V Union. Uh, Reggie's seems just fine where it is. It doesn't really change its strategy too much, but it's solidly within that top five of decks. And I think nothing really changes um, with that. Palky is a weird one, it's cashed in on the jelly nonsense, and Lugia <clears throat> is constantly battling with spaces in the list. Uh, and I don't know if Lugia can really afford to play Birdkeeper Eldegoss, maybe it just plays Birdkeeper. I think a number of people could even drop it down. So there is some hope for jelly decks to come back. Um, so we'll sort of put a pin in that and see where it goes. The sort of Yvelto control and Mewtwo control, like I was saying with Mew, I'd, I'd expect... Mewtwo is essentially unplayable for Arlington, but I think it's very playable again for um, the tournament coming up in San Diego. But it definitely comes with its risks. Uh, people should still be respecting Mewtwo to an extent, so I think there will st still be some Drapion around um, in some of these top decks. And even then, we've seen a few Path to the Peaks come into Lugia as well recently with like John Eng and co and that could be another fear factor cancelling cologne as well you can cologne a Mewtwo then knock it out with an amazing destruction I think Loki Lugia with cologne or two copies of cologne is actually very good because it just beats like it beats a lot of the nonsense it helps you beat controlling decks it helps you beat wheezing it helps you beat uh, Duraludon it's like really good at just being that no nonsense card that helps you out and even if you have the space I don't know if you could ever have the space. But if you play a Raikou, you could even cancel and clone a Manaphy and deal with that and maybe hit something else at the same time as well. Um, so there's a lot of nonsense beating if you are going to play Cologne in Lugia. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. Um, similar for Art Dura, what I was saying to Reggie is it, you know what we, we're doing with Art Dura at this point. It's kind of just trying to do its thing and doesn't really adapt with the times. It just <laughs> tries to do its best. Giratina, I think it's weak into Lugia and weak into Lost Box, so I think it's basically unplayable. Um, that's just me. Uh, what else is there? I think Zoro is a decent deck to get you day two, because I don't think it's likely that you face three Lost Box day one, but I think it's really, really hard to make that top eight with Zoro Box, because you will inevitably take L's to Lost Box whenever you do encounter it. Eternal Weezing, I think, you know, if you want to go down that cheese path, I honestly prefer Vika Vault decks for that. Because I think Vika Vault is a more stable strategy into Lost Box in particular than the Weezing loop. Because um, they can still get to their seven and still do gate shenanigans and then still outpower you. So, yeah, I think Weezing's like the wrong kind of cheese deck. I think these Vika Vault decks coming out of the woodwork are, are much stronger, personally. So yeah, let me know your thoughts down below of the metagame. What are you thinking for San Diego? Um, and what do you think about some of the decks that we've seen? Uh, how are you going to be adapting your archetype going into that tournament? I'll hear it all down below. Happy, I hope you all had a great Christmas break as well. I'm hoping to be back with uh, consistent content uh, daily. So yeah, I'll see you then. Cheers.